Can you hear me back there? I am honored to be here once again with you. Um, I received the invitation to your fourth anniversary celebration just a few weeks ago. Ordinarily, it would be difficult for me to say yes at such short notice. But I said yes to Pastor Gilbert for two particular reasons. One reason being, oh, he caught me at a time when I'm, I was on my, I'm on my writing leave. And when I checked my schedule, today is the last day of my leave, which means next Sunday I go back to my pulpit duty. So, uh, very providential of the Lord for him to invite me on this particular Sunday. The second reason I was... Uh, I could not say no to Pastor Gilbert was because he did such a marvelous job in our church uh, last June. So I figured uh, it would be it would not be very nice of me to say no, particularly since uh, the Lord moved in a very special way in our church to the message that Pastor Gilbert gave us. Anyway, I think congratulations are in order. Um, the Lord bless you for your fourth anniversary. Um, we also in Higher Rock celebrated our 14th anniversary just last February and uh, wow, I really enjoy anniversaries if only to look at the people that attend on, that, on the particular Sunday that the church is celebrating because you'd think that in our church anyway you'd think that we have a revival I'm beginning to wonder what, where all the people come from uh, whenever we celebrate our anniversary and I wonder are they here for the spiritual food or the lunch afterwards? <laughs> well, however, it, however the, whatever reasons they have, uh, I, I take it as from God. Thankfully, I believe in the sovereignty of God. And uh, even if they're there for the food, I trust that God has a special purpose for them, not just to finish everything in the table. So we, um, may the Lord truly bless you. Uh, four years, it's quite an achievement. Today, I would like to encourage you with a message from the book of Romans. But let me begin by stating that as believers in Jesus, we are a people of faith. And the scriptures are rife with explanation with respect to the role of faith in the believer's life. If you live through the pages of the Bible, and you will discover that through faith, we obtain justification. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, this is not the passage that we will be going into, but in Romans 1, 17, he wrote, For in the righteousness of God is revealed, for in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Also in Romans 328 Paul said therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law the same point is made in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and if by great by the grace of God you have become a believer faith's role in your life continues Believers are told, for instance, uh, to live by faith, Galatians 2.20. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 4 and in Romans 11 verse 20, it says we are encouraged to stand by faith. In Romans chapter 4 verse 12, uh, we are told to walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Christians are to also overcome the world by faith, 1 John 5 verse 4. Christians are supposed to defeat the devil by faith. Ephesians 6, verse 16, and 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9. We are also told that believers are delivered from the power of sin by faith. The Apostle Peter specifically says that in 1 Peter 1, verse 9. As a church, as a people, we are edified by faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. Peter also adds that we are preserved through faith. We also engage in spiritual warfare by faith. 1 Timothy 1, 
verses 18 and 19. So, as His children, God expects that we continue in faith. Faith is not just something that we experience at the point of our conversion, but it is something God expects us to continue in. As children, God expects that we are to even be sincere in faith. First, uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7 says, we should abound in faith. Colossians 1 23 adds, we should continue in faith. Romans 4 verses 20 to 24 says that we are to be strong in faith. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13 says, we should stand fast in faith. In Hebrews 10 22 says, we should have the full assurance of faith. So faith is not only useful for our salvation or conversion, we are enjoined by Scripture to continue our lives in the full assurance of faith. In fact, Luke 17 verse 5 encourages us to pray for the increase of faith uh, as the apostles did. We believers in Christ are essentially children of faith. Born not after flesh, nor according to the workings of nature, but by the power of God. We trace our new birth, not to blood, not to the will of the flesh, nor to the will of man, but to God and God alone. We owe our conversion neither to the reasoning of the, intellect, uh, of the intellectual or the eloquence of the preacher, neither to our natural goodness nor to our personal efforts. We are the children of God's power and grace according to the covenant and promise of faith. We are all together saved by faith. And that is why we could truly say that the brightest day that ever dawned upon us was the day in which we first, as the psalmist puts it in Psalm 34 verse 5, the day when we looked to Him and were radiant. It was all dark till faith allowed us to behold the Son of Righteousness. And I uh, spell the word Son with the, with the U. The Son of Righteousness who is Christ Jesus the Savior. The dawn of faith was to us a new morning, the morning of life. By faith only did we begin to truly live. And since then, if we have truly been converted in Christ, we have walked by faith. And whenever we have been tempted to step aside from the path of faith, we have been like the foolish Galatians. That is why Paul wrote to them and reproved them. In Galatians 3 verses 1 to 3, he said, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the faith, are you now being made perfect in the flesh? Now, brethren, since we are children born of faith, and our claim to the promise of the covenant is by faith. And since our new life from the beginning and its continuance is all of faith, so must we realize that our ministry is of faith too. We are heralds of the gospel of salvation in Christ alone, by grace alone, and by faith alone. We go to people not with the command, this do and you shall live. That is not our message. But we go to them with a simple message. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. We preach not the law given to Moses at Sinai, but we preach the message of love of Calvary. We preach not man's merit, but Christ crucified. For on his death, or through his death, are we all who receive him by faith saved. The